Hello, this is a brief tutorial of Viticulture on Board Game Arena. Viticulture is a worker placement game where we are all caretakers of our own vineyard and through various actions we are trying to fulfill, create and fulfill wine orders. And the game goes to 20 points and the first player who gets to 20, that round ends or that year ends, and then the person with the most points wins. The game is played in years, and each year has four seasons. And again, as soon as somebody hits the 20 point mark, we finish out the year, and then whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The seasons are listed on what they, are, do, what they do here, but just as a brief overview, spring is when you choose turn order in terms of like placement for the worker placement. The summer is when you place on these yellow spots your workers. The winter is when you place on these blue spots. And the fall in between the summer and the winter is when you draw some cards. Um, note that you have a specific number of workers. Currently I have three. And you get to use those three workers for the entire year. So any workers that you use during the summer you will not have available to use during the winter but at the end of the year then you retrieve all of your workers back you start with three but you can see here you have three others that you could gain um, in various ways throughout the game there all right so so these are the various places that you can go and we'll go to th get through those in detail notice that there are three spots on each of them um, because we are playing with three players here, this third spot is not available. Just these two spots. If there were four players, that would be available uh, as well. There's also a spot in each place that has a little icon on it. If you are the first person to go on that spot, you get that bonus. Um, then, for example, here, this is to draw a green card. If you go here, you get to draw an extra green card. But if you go here, you just draw the one green card. If these two spots are full, you may not go there except everybody has one grande worker. This one with a G. The grande worker can go anywhere, even if it's full. So even if these spots are both full, you can still use your grande worker there and take that action. Not necessarily with the bonus, but um, you just take the normal action for it. If you go on that bonus, you don't have to take the bonus. Sometimes you may want to block other people from taking that bonus. But like going there first and going on that spot gives you that bonus. You can go on a non-bonus spot if you want to be nice, but that's uh, that bonus spot, you don't have to take it. Or, or for instance, here when you play two yellow cards, you, you don't have to play both two, two yellow cards and you can still go here. All right, let's take a look before we go over these different spots at our, each player's board. So this is your board. And the best way to, to kind of get the concept around what we're doing here is understanding the path of making wine. So the first step in making wine is to grow your grapes. And that's what you do here in these fields. You will place these green cards in the various fields. And they each have a maximum value. A five, six, and seven. And now you see this one, it only has a one red on it. If you place that here, then that can that can be grown there. But if you have multiple that add up, you start adding up these numbers and it adds up to five. That's all you can fit in this field. You could fit six in this one and seven in this one. And you can plant those in any field that you want. So you plant the grapes into the field. Then you harvest the grapes and the grapes come down here and then you take your grapes and you turn them into wine and that's what comes over here when you harvest a grape it will take that number so in this case if I harvested this field it would give me a one red grape and so I would fill that one red we'll see a little bit later what that looks like but just understand that's the main process plant the field harvest the grapes make the wine 
and then you can fill wine orders, which are these purple cards. To, and that's the main way that you get points in the game. <clears throat> All right, let's go over the worker spots, and then we'll go over a few other details and look at some of the uh, later in the game. Before that, though, we're going to look at the, this at the spring season. So in order that an order that switches. So first, the third player gets to pick first, but then the next time the the I believe this player will get to pick first, and then I'll get to pick first, and it just kind of goes around in terms of who gets to pick first in the turn order. And what you are bidding is who goes first on your worker placement turns. So if you place your rooster here, that means you will be first in line and you will get to pick the spots first, which is good because then you're more likely to get these bonuses, right? However, you can see there's no bonus that you get for choosing the spot. But if you choose to go second or if you choose number two, then you get to draw a green card, three, a purple card, and the things get better as you go down up to the seventh card, you get an extra worker for the year if you do that one. But if you choose this one, you're guaranteed to go last. And so everybody chooses what they want, and then that's the order that it goes in. So if I chose number two, and got a green card, and nobody else chose one, I would still go first. So it's just whatever order that is. Maybe I choose two, and somebody else wants a point, so they go to six, and then somebody else wants a coin, so they go four. So then it would go this person, then this person, then this person. That's the spring. Once all that, you get your bonuses and turn order. And into that turn order, we will start placing workers. All right, so there's a few that are fairly easy. This one is basically just a way to get money. This gives you two money, but the bonus gives you one extra. So that gives you three lira. This one lets you draw a plant card, which we use to plant in our fields. The bonus lets you draw an extra one. This one lets you play one of these uh, visitor cards. This is a summer visitor and these are the winter visitor. We'll go over those in a little bit, but these just are basically special abilities that you can do. The bonus lets you play two instead of one. Um, the Here, the plant lets you take one from your hand and put it into a field. But the extra, the bonus, lets you put two in your in your field at once instead of just one. Uh, this one, the bonus just gives you a point, which is really nice. Points are, are, you know, there's only 20 points till the end of the game, so points are very valuable. But it also lets you sell a gra at least one grape or buy slash sell a field. So you have these current fields. If you're really strapped for cash, or if you just don't really care about filling all three fields, you may just want to sell one of your fields and get the money. If you sell this one, you get five, this one six, and this one seven. Uh, you could maybe, you know, you think, I'm only going to use these two fields, so I'm just going to sell that seven, get myself a, a bonus, some, some extra cash in the beginning, because that, that can be helpful to get new workers in a few other ways. Um, if you do that, then that field is no longer usable until you pay that same value to get it back by going here again. I wouldn't recommend it unless you know that you're not going to need it because buying it back takes another action plus you're using back all that money you know that's that probably isn't worth it but if you know you're not going to use the field then maybe go ahead and sell it and get that extra cash uh, up front buying and selling grapes when you have grapes down here any grapes that are on this level, you can sell for one lira. Any on this level, you can sell for two. And any on this, you can sell for three. And you can sell as many as you'd like by going here. So if you're looking for money and you don't necessarily need the wine or you have a lot of extra grapes, you can sell those by going here. Finally, you can build a structure by going here. And this one gives you a discount for building a structure. Now the structures are all down here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there are a couple important ones I want to point out the trellis and irrigation some of these green cards will require one or both of those in order to plant them so these are pretty important to buildings to get at least the trellis because there, there are several cards that are going to use that and the better cards like this is not a great great card because it's just one red but there'll be some that is like two white 
and three red, and that's going to require the irrigation or the trellis. So those are important to do. The cellar, you can only create this wine without upgrading your cellar. So the medium cellar lets you use wines of this value, and the large cellar lets you use wines of this value, and some of these extra different types of wines, which we'll go over later. The others are just kind of little bonuses that let you do extra things. I'll let you kind of figure those out yourself, get, let you get extra points, let you draw extra cards, and so forth. Those are the main ones to think about when you're talking about building a building. All right, those are all of the summer uh, worker spots. After summer, you on, in fall you draw either a summer winter uh, summer visitor card or a winter visitor card, or if you have the cottage, you can draw one of each or two of one. In the winter, you can use these blue items. This one lets you draw purple. These are the one. These are the wine fulfillment cards. These say, hey, if you give if you turn in this much wine, you get this much these many points and in income. If you, the bonus is to, to draw two instead of just one. This one lets you play a blue winter visitor card, and the bonus lets you play an extra one. Harvesting a field. This lets you harvest one field, but the bonus lets you harvest up to two. So when you have things planted, that the harvest this action turns those grapes into grapes down here. And then making up to two wines, or up to three if you have the bonus, takes these grapes and moves them into wine. Then down here, filling a wine order, you just fill one wine order where you take that wine and you fill it and turn it in for those points and you get the bonus it gives you an extra point. And then the other blue winter action is here to train a new worker. It costs four lira to train a worker. If you land here it only costs three for the bonus. This spot right here, you can always go, any number of people can go to, and it just gives you one lira. So if you have an extra worker, and you need something to do with it, and there's nowhere else you can put it, that's one that you can you can just stick right there for one lira. I should mention as well that you can put multiple of yours on a single spot if there's available. So you could say, let's say you wanted to fill two orders, you could put two of your workers on that if there's room or if there's only room for one you can put one and your grande so you can still get it twice okay so there's not a limit there just in the spots that exist all right um, so um, the cards do a lot of different things and it kind of the, they're kind of the thing that changes up the game and gives you lots of interesting variety I'm not going to obviously go through all the cards but they do different things. Like this one, for me, if I plant one, a plant a green card by playing this, it lets me plant one. And if I have at least three different type planted on that field, I get two victory points. That's nice if I can set it up. This one, I can age my wine. We'll talk about aging in a bit. Or lose a point to upgrade my cellar to the next level, which means I get a free building out of that. There are several cards that let, let you lose points in order to gain some sort of benefit. That's why the points go down to negative here. All right, at the end of the winter, the year end stuff, the first thing you do is you age your grape and wine tokens. So all of your all of your tokens that are on these grapes or wine, they get moved over moved up one if you have the room for it. Now, like, if you had wine here at three and you did not have the medium seller, they would just stay at that three. You get up all your workers back. You get any residual payments. So often when you fill orders, then it will give you payments as well, or there's other ways to get payments. And you move your little person on this. You can get up to five lira at the end of each year um, based on where you are in that. We'll show what that looks like discard down to seven cards at the end of the year you can only have seven cards in your hand so you'd have to get rid of any that are not there and the first player token for picking the spring order moves counterclockwise all right let's go a little further in the game so you can see kind of what it looks like to go through the harvest and winemaking process 
Okay, this is year three. So we've been through two rounds and we're in the towards the end of the third year and in the winter season. I'm going to show a few things that I wasn't able to show before. So um, you can see that I have planted several things in my fields. Uh, these cards, you look at this one, it has one red and one white. This one has two white and this one one red. If you add all those numbers up, it is five. So this this uh, field is completely full. I can't put any more wine cards there. I have two here, um, so that is not yet full. Notice though, I've got this four here that I'm planning to plant there, and that will make six. But you can see at the top left that it requires both the irrigation and the trellis to plant this one, but it's a four, which is really nice. So I will eventually plant that one as well. You can see I have harvested some grapes already. There's one that's value three and one that's value four. I've not made any wine quite yet. Also, this is what a purple card looks like. It has requirements in terms of what wine that you get. A red wine of four or more and a white wine of two or more. So you could do things that are that are higher than that to get those points, but at least a red of four and a white, and a white of two. And the rewards for that are three victory points and plus one on this residual track payment. So on this, we are in the winter. We just we just started winter. I am going to first harvest my fields. And because I'm the first one to go there, I get to harvest two fields. And so I'm harvesting both of those. Now a couple of things to note when you harvest a field. So I had a three... Uh, I had a three already and I had a four already. Then I harvested this, which gives me a two red. You add up the red and I get a two and another two red. Well, you can't have multiple ones on the same spot, so it just goes one less. So in this case, I would harvest two here and then the two here just goes one here. It puts it on the one. If I had no spot for it, I just wouldn't get to harvest that. And then these two add up and give me this three. So I was able to get three grape tokens for the uh, for harvesting both of these fields. All right, and the next thing I'm doing is making wine. I was up here, so I was able to make up to three wines. Now let's talk about making wine. So you to make a wine, you pick one of these options here, and then you choose which grapes to use for it. The grape, the wine numbers have to match or match the grape numbers. So for this wine, this red wine three. Remember, I'm trying to get this four and two, so I'm looking for a four. Uh, unfortunately, I can't quite get that. But at the end of the year, this will age up to four because I have the medium seller. So I get the three and I use the three grape. I'm using the four on the white. And I'll probably do another white or uh, red. A couple other um, wines that you should know about are the pink wines or the rosé, I think. I don't know. These these ones here, you can get on blush wines, sorry. You can get by combining two different uh, or two or three different wines. So for the blush, for the pink ones, you add one of these and one of these and you take that number and that's what it gets so I could take that you know it's letting me know that I could do a four or a five because I get either the three and the two or the three and the one it would use up both grapes and give me these which are typically more valuable wines I don't have a card that wants them but the cards that want those are for worth more and these sparkling wines I believe take two uh, two red and one white and they only can be in the large cellar. I don't believe in the in the in this game I ever got to the large cellar, but there are some that you can get extra real good points for having those sparkling wines. Alright, so those are the three wines that I created. Alright, and then my next move. I passed. I was done. Used I'd used up all my wor workers. And so notice that all of my wines moved up one, and now I've got a four, uh, a four red wine. So I'm ready to fulfill that the next winter. I can't fill it, fulfill it until the winter, until that spot's available. But 
I can fill that in the winter. I also ended up getting a residual, I think, from a card. I don't believe I'd fulfilled any yet. Um, but like, for instance, this one, this one was one I was going for. I'm going to be playing a card here. This one lets me discard either a grape of any kind to gain one residual, or a wine of any valuable value to gain two residual. And so I believe I, I get rid of one of my really cheap wines in order to do that. This one lets me pay eight money to build any two structures. So I can build these really expensive ones if I wanted to. I didn't end up using this one, but there are cards that do a lot of different things. In fact, a strategy to look for is with these cards, a lot of times the cards let you do things that you would have to do in another spot, but they give you some extra benefit. So if you can do something that you wanted to do already with a card, a lot of times that's going to be more valuable to you, especially if you can play two cards and then you get, so you're kind of getting more efficient in the way that you produce that. All right, I'm going to go towards the end of the game, talk about a few more things, and then we'll end that up. Okay, we are at the end of the game, and the reason that the end of the game is, this is the end of the game is because somebody got past 20, tells you this is the last year, so we're going to finish out this year, and then whoever has the most points wins. It doesn't mean they win, it's just this is the last year, and you try to get as many points, and you can go above 20, you can actually go as far uh, up as you would like. It just shows 25, but you can certainly go further than that if you get the points for it. And it'll tell you who is above it and how many points they have. So I am in a bit of a pickle here because I've been trying to dig for wine that I can fulfill. And I, I had this one, this 5-3, but I could not get that red 5. And I needed to it would need to age by the end of the year. So I kept digging for more, and I ended up getting... Uh, this one here, which needed a six blush wine and a five blush wine. And I realized if I could harvest some fields, then I'd have enough to make both of those. And it turned out I have this harvester, which lets me harvest two fields and gain a point. So I thought, okay, that works great. I will play that. So I play the harvester. I harvest both of those fields, and now I've got a bunch of grapes. And I got an extra point from it. Then I go to make wine. Right? So I, I, I go to the make up to two wines. I combine uh, a four and a two to make a six, or no, a three and a three to make a six. And then I'm going to make combine this four grape and this one red grape to make a five, and I'll have the six and the five and be able to turn that in. There I have my two blush wines ready to turn that in. And notice these spots are filled, but I, I still have my grande worker. You always want to save that until you really need it because it's you know really nice to be able to just place it whenever you need it. And I'm able to fill that wine in, and that puts me tied at 24 with that first player. I had to look up the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker is first, how much money. Second, I believe, is number of buildings. Um, and there's a third tiebreaker too. But I knew that I could get with my residuals because I was up to five residuals and they were only in four. And they had eight. Or no, they had, we both had three, so I knew I would get at least one more. But since I had one extra worker anyway, I stuck him in this spot just to get one extra lira, and I ended up winning on the tiebreaker. So it was really close. Um, I was going to see if I can find him. Anyway, that is the game. So this only lasted six six years so it went fairly quick you're it's kind of that race to 20 and you your best bet is to fill those wine orders but there are lots of different cards always look at those cards and take advantage of those cards when you can because they can get you lots of good bonuses as well all right i hope that helps